out there. Thank you for having me, first yeah, of all, thank, thank you. you. Um, the reason why I'm here, I just want to share a little bit about my story um, and how um, I worked all the way to Amherst College. Um, I came here when I was 12. Um, when I was 12, I decided to um, immigrate to the United States to reunite with my mother, who I had not met because uh, when, when, I, when, I, when she, she moved here when I was a year and a half. Um, hey, Mr. Lana. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I moved here um, undocumented. Um, the trip took about three weeks. Um, I was basically with strangers, um, and it was a very, very challenging um, trip because um, sometimes we had food, sometimes we didn't have food. It was like you didn't really know what was going to happen, like anything could have happened. It was a group of about 20 people traveling, um, guided by a coyote. Um, and then um, one of them was 12. The other ones were all over um, 18. Um, so we, um, we, we went from El Salvador to Guatemala, which that took like, we spent in Guatemala about like a week or so, just traveling, driving um, all throughout the country. Um, and then we got to Mexico. Um, a lot of the times when the cars would be detained, um, they asked us to pretend we were sleeping so they couldn't tell that we were like not from Mexico. We also had to um, fake accent because they could in Mexico they can tell when people are from Central America. So we basically had to um, when we were talking to police officer, we had to talk like like um, with the Mexican Spanish accent. Um, so the hardest, most difficult part was when I um, when we got to the border. Um, we were there uh, by, um, it was like in the woods waiting for immigration officers to like leave the river so that we could cross. Um, we spent there like about, I don't remember how many hours, but it was, it was a while. Um, um, when it was, when it got dark, it was about like six o'clock at uh, like night. We were able to um, like cross the border. We went through the river. Um, they they pushed us in a like in a in a tube. Um, they pushed us all throughout the river, and then we got to. Um, it was ironic because it was a golf course where like um, very like rich people were playing golf in the middle of Texas. So that, that was like the first image of the United States that I got. Um, and then we didn't really know where to go because the um, coyote had left us there. So we were stopped by immigration. Um, and they asked us where we were from. And they basically took us and we were um, detained. We were in the detention centers for like, I was there for like about two days. Um, they like interro interrogated us, interviewed us. Um, they're not very nice to minors. Um, like there's a lot of like, um, like verbal abuse um, and such um, that they really don't, don't treat you with the respect that you should be treated. Um, so after that, um, they contacted my mom, um, and after they checked that my mom lived in the United States, uh, they released me, and I had to travel from Texas to Los Angeles in bus, because that's where I was going to meet my mom, and then we flew to the, to North, to, to here. Um, when I got here, everything was very, very different, like I really didn't know what to do, um, especially I, I, I didn't know my family, so that was that took time to like get used to reuniting with my family. <coughs> but I also like when I started school, that was one of the most difficult parts because like I didn't know any English, I didn't know anything. Like the school, like this is a like, big ELL like group. Before it used to be like three students. Like Reina remembers, she was in she was in seventh grade when I first got there. Um, it was very very small. We were like we were basically segregated. Um, and also, at first they put us, well, they put me in like regular classes with like all the American kids. We had one ELL class. And then we were like in regular classes, which it was really like, that was not the right way to do it because we didn't know anything. I didn't know English. I didn't know what the, prof the teacher was saying. Um, so that was, that was very challenging. Um, after a few months where we started complaining that we we weren't learning anything because it was all in English and there was no translation. Like, um, 
so they put us in different, like they put us in an ELO group um, where we spent about, well, I spent there six months. Um, all the classes were just um, in Spanish and English. And we were like segregated from like all the other classes. We ha were just like the small ELO group. They were teaching us math, um, English, uh, science, everything. Um, but yeah, after a year, um, I really didn't want to be in, ELL, in, in the ELL class because I don't know, I felt like I was ready to go into um, eighth grade English. Um, so I convinced the teacher to sign me, to write me like a recommendation, and she did. So I ended up taking um, regular uh, eighth grade English and that was my second year of being um, in the U.S. Um, so that worked out really well because I was able to learn a lot, it, although it was really challenging because um, we were expected to write paper, like small essays in English, like everything was in English. But like, if you really put hard work into something you, and you take something more challenging, you'll definitely learn more than like staying, let's say, at, like, like at, a, an, at a lower level class. Um, when I got to the high school, um, the ELL system here was still not very strong, <laughs> I would say. Um, it, was based, it was very, like, like five students, I would say, not many. Um, so I had one ELL class the first semester, um, where I would, they would help me with my homework, they would help me with like, the academics at high school and all of that. But um, I felt like I wasn't getting a lot from it, so I decided just not to take YOLO anymore. Um, and I started taking like, like regular, regular classes, um, easier classes, because at that point I was just like, oh, I'm just going to take the easier classes. Because there was this rumor in high school that um, freshman and sophomore year didn't matter. Like that's when you can do whatever, whatever you want and like, you can take the easiest classes. But, that's not true, like the whole high school experience matter. <laughs> like, yeah, make sure you work hard all from like ninth grade all the way to 12th, because all those grades are the grades that are gonna go into your college applications. And those are the ones that are gonna matter. Um, so I didn't, I basically, um, it was very difficult because I knew I was undocumented all throughout high school. I used to have to go every year to court in Boston um, to go in front of a, uh, a judge who, um, if he really wanted, he, he, could, he could have written me um, a letter of, like, a deportation order. Um, but good thing he didn't. And so I was dealing with that. In high school, it was really difficult. Not many people, like, were undocumented, so I didn't really share that with, with a lot of people because, I mean, I shared with Ms. Giordano because she knew, um, she knew my status, but it wasn't, like, there was very, very little um, undocumented students at that time. Mm -hmm. It was mostly, um, yeah, even the ELL students were, like, um, documented. Um, so that was, so I didn't really know. I, my, the, um, I never thought, like, going to college would have been, like, possible because I knew how difficult, like, it was. Um, like, junior year, junior year of high school was when we, like, started having college meetings and like we started doing research with Ms. Jordan and like there's very little options available like almost anything and like it was really frustrating because I would always be at her office like trying to ask her like what can we do and and like it was difficult because there was not much that 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 we could do um so what what I started doing senior year of high school um I because that was the closest thing to college courses that I was gonna get. I started taking AP courses, just so that maybe if I passed the test, I would get college credits. Um, so I took three, three, three AP courses, I think, my senior year, um, which were very helpful because I, it would, they were very challenging, but I, I, I learned a lot, and like, I was able to get college credit through one ELL course, which helped me when I got into community college. Um, yeah, but the second semester, um, I, I thought that I was just gonna like, end up dishwashing. Cause that's what I, I had a dishwashing job um, while I was in high school. And when I saw that there was no college options, I was like, I'm just gonna end up having to get like a full-time job doing this. 
um, but I wasn't very happy with um, that option. So um, I took all the money that I had saved and signed up for courses at Holy Community College, um, where I had to I had to pay out of state tuition, which is um, almost it's twice it's it's twice um, as much as you would pay as as in state. Um, Can I actually pause you for a second, yeah. Brian? I've been like dreading doing this for a little while because, okay. but I think we need to translate a little bit of this for some students okay. are newcomers. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That was kind of a lot, though. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> no, I just I threw it out there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so maybe together <laughs> we can try to translate a little bit. Yeah, I have Spanish students from here. Yep, so like, <laughs> non American comes out, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so many so Ryan here, for example, together. Ryan and Alex just yeah. arrived. Yeah, I know ago. Alex. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And we have some other some other students here who probably benefit from hearing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Jan's really excited to help. Um, I'm in Spanish too. <laughs> so if you're down here, talk to Jan. Um, so I missed the very beginning. I mean, Rena, can you help me with this? <laughs> so I hablo español solamente que no estaba aquí en el salón. Okay. So let's so let's we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, we'll use the beginning. Okay, Sin mi mamá, para reunirme con mi mamá, para con sí, mamá. que no había visto. Pero estaba en un grupo con personas desconocidas, sí. un grupo grande. Um, sí. Es un paso que tuvo que pasar por distintos lugares. Eh, ¿Cuánto? 23 días. 23 días. Eh, muy asustador de pronto para algunos de ustedes, pienso yo que se acuerdan porque tendrán las mismas memorias. So, um, después de todo ese tiempo, Brian llega a una escuela pública, que es la Middle School. Allá yo lo conocí. Y en ese tiempo, la clase de guía de no era esto que tienen ustedes aquí. No era las maestras que ustedes tienen. Um, la, dije, dijéramos que las oportunidades eran muy limitadas. Porque la mayoría de de clases eran todo el tiempo en inglés. So, él llegó con muy pocas oportunidades en lo que fue la escuela media. Después pasó a la high school y en la high school igual todavía no, no estaba, dijéramos, tan bien construido sí. este, este salón de clase. Sí. Este mundo pequeñito que pertenece a todos ustedes. Como tres a cinco alumnos, algo así, muy poca. Bueno, y algo que le ayudó mucho a Brian fue el querer aprender. Por difícil que estuviese pasando, el querer aprender. Él mismo seguir buscando clases regulares. Él mismo tratar de no quedarse con lo que llegó, sino seguir aprendiendo. Is that good? Does anybody want think we should add anything? Any English Spanish speakers? I think you know he really talked about pushing himself here when he was at Yamai and mm -hmm. taking those AP courses. AP courses and uh -huh. So and so that was really Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so parte de la lo, lo clave de su historia aquí en la high school fue que Brian se empujó mucho Stop. Siempre está buscando a Mr. Dano para información acerca de cuál su horario y qué él podía hacer para mejorarse. Y decidió tomar clases difíciles, por ejemplo, se dice AP, AP, clases para las cuales te dan crédito de la universidad. Entonces él decidió hacer tres clases así en su, en su último año para recibir crédito para la universidad pero también todavía tenía miedo de graduarse y seguir lavando trastes, que es lo que estaba haciendo mientras estaba aquí. Al final de cuentas, tenía la oportunidad de ir a la University. So do you want to say something about HCC? 
Um, bueno, él, él contó el hecho de, de que cuando eres indocumentado y vas al college, um, no tienen la misma ayuda, no tienen la ayuda financiera que tiene un estudiante común y corriente. Eh, ahí les toca pagar, dijéramos, el doble. Entonces, otra vez, de nuevo, las oportunidades hacen de que todo sea más limitado para esa persona. O sea, su lucha ha sido bien grande, bien fuerte. Thank you. Thanks. So I don't so, wait, we'll let you keep going, maybe we can stay up here. Okay, just we'll continue. Okay, yeah, just let me know, because I don't, yeah, just let me know. Um, I mean, if you want to translate, you can, but I, we're happy to help you out. Okay, I'll take some help. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my first semester at Holy Community College, um, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I didn't know what major to choose from. I I was basically clueless, paying um, out-of-state tuition. Um, I, I was only able to afford three courses because the prices were so high when like regular students usually take four or five. Um, so I started working. Um, I, got two other, I got two more jobs. So at that point, I was working three jobs um, so I could like, be able to afford um, HCC full-time out-of-state. Out of Um, another challenge that I had was transportation because I lived in Florence and there are barely any buses in Florence that go to Holyoke. So sometimes I had to walk, like especially from my house, I had to walk sometimes two miles just to get to the bus station for a bus to go to Northampton, for, from Northampton to Holyoke. And that would take like hours and that was really like disencouraging. Like that at some point I was like, why am I even doing this? Like I don't even know if I'm, if I'm going to be like successful if I'm going like, to be able to go to a four-year university. Um, so during my time at HCC, I met um, th this um, an advisor. Uh, she helps students like, tr transition from HCC into like, four-year colleges, uh, especially like, uh, the top like, liberal arts schools. Um, so I, I had a meeting with her, and she, um, I told her that I was interested in Amherst College because I knew that Amherst gave really um, They, they had a need blind financial aid package for um, regardless of your, of your status as an undocumented student, even for international students. Um, so I went and spoke to her and she told me that um, if I really wanted it, that I, I, could, I, I could do it, but I had to put a lot of work into it because <clears throat> um, Amherst, for transfer students, Amherst, only, Amherst has like a, a three to five acceptance rate So the chances of getting as a transfer student are very, very slim. Um, so I, I, I told her that I was, if she could help me like advising like the courses I should take. Um, so the first thing she said, take as, ma as much honors courses as you can um, and get good grades. Like basically like you have to get um, not anything less than an A minus for like all the courses. And that was really difficult um, because I was working um, a lot of hours and trying to keep up with academics and school work and like getting around from a job to school, from like school to my house. It was just, it was really, really, really challenging. Yeah, so that's all right. Yeah. Do you want to, okay. obviamente <laughs> 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 el hecho de transportarse a donde tenía que ir, que era el colegio lejos de su casa. Um, otro obstáculo era el, el pensar de que, ok, eh, yo estoy haciendo esto, a qué punto yo estoy haciendo esto, si voy a salir con algo o no. Eh, muchas cosas podían pasar por su mente para, para desanimarse y para no seguir. Al contrario, él llegó a trabajar tres trabajos diferentes para poder pagar um, sus cursos, para poder seguir um, en lo que era su meta. Um, después es cuando conoce a esta persona que le guía. Esto fue... En, fue ese semestre. Ok. Y básicamente le dicen que lo que tiene que tener son los, unas notas excelentes, unos créditos superiores a 
B tendría que ser siquiera una A. Que ustedes saben lo difícil que es eso. Uh, so, ha sido retos en todos los aspectos. Económico, ha sido reto en esforzarse de hacer mejor cada vez, a estudiar y a dar lo mejor que pueda. De... Gracias. Sí. <risa> Oh, sí. Okay. Um, another part that was challenging was um, people. Like a lot of times when I used to tell people that I was interested in Amherst College, they would just laugh at me in my face. Like, like Amherst College. Like, are you serious? Do you really think you're gonna go there? Um, even at, at my job, um, I used to be a waiter at, at a restaurant, and one of the customers like asked me what I was doing, and I told him, and then I told him I was trying to transfer into Amherst. And he just laughed in my face. He was like, do you know how much it costs to, to go there? And I'm like, yeah, like I'm aware of all of that. And then he was like, okay then, um, then you should really think about, um, he told me, why don't you think about like <coughs> UMass or like other, 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 other um, more affordable col colleges. They obviously didn't know that I was undocumented. So I just didn't say anything. I was just like, let me just do what I have to do and let me prove you wrong. Um, um, so after that year, after my third year at year, uh, Holy Community College, um, President Obama gave, um, gave an executive order um, called the Deferred Action for Child, Childhood Arrivals, um, DACA, which granted um, students like me um, a work permit um, so that you, and you can also obtain a driver's license. Um, Another thing that, that was approved that year was in-state tuition uh, for DACA in Massachusetts. So after that, I was able to um, obtain pay in-state tuition um, at Holy Community College. So that was a, that was a huge thing for me because I, I, I was gonna be able to drive to school and I was gonna be able to, um, to take more classes. So what I did was like with the money I, I had saved up, I signed up for, um, five courses uh, uh, at Holy Community College so I could um, finish faster, because my goal was to finish in two years and then transfer. Um, and that actually worked out very well. Um, I took two, two honors courses um, and then three regular courses. Um, and I also took some tests so I could get more credit and finish like on, in the two years that I, had, I wanted to finish in. Um, so my last semester at HCC, I had to take um, an honors course that was really, really challenging. Um, and um, that's where I had to like apply for, for colleges that I, where I wanted to transfer into. Um, and it was, college applications are very, very difficult. Like they require a lot of time, especially for like undocumented or DACA students. Um, at that time I was, I was trying to work, like do school, everything. <clears throat> so um, it was really challenging to focus in college applications. So I didn't put much attention in college applications because I thought I had the grade. So like college applications essays weren't that important, which was, it was a huge mistake that I, I, I did. Um, so at the end, I applied to, to three schools um, only. Um, one of them was UMass, one of them um, was Trinity, and um, one of them was Amherst. And because I didn't focus a lot in the college applications, I, um, I only got accepted into, into UMass, the Honors College of UMass, um, because um, I had a, a, an, a okay GPA, I guess. Um, so I graduated um, Holy Community College within the two years um, high honors, um, and and it was um, it was really great to graduate uh, from Holy Community College. But the only place that accepted me at that time was UMass. Sure. So it was really like because UMass it cost like twenty two thousand dollars to go one I don't know one semester a year I'm not sure, um, and I'm not able to I'm not eligible for financial aid, so I knew that that wasn't even possible. And um, I called UMass, I tried to set up appointments with them. They weren't very friendly. 
um, they said that there was no way I was getting financial aid, that I should be happy I was getting um, in-state tuition, and that I was, um, and they really didn't want to take me as a junior, but by law, they had to take me as a junior. So before they sent me the, um, the acceptance letter, they, they told me it's like, um, because of your curriculum, because you're a liberal arts major, we can't really, um, we shouldn't accept you as a junior. And then I was like, but by law and by my GPA, you have to send me as a junior. And, and then they gave me a hard time, but I gave them a hard time so that they sent me the letter of, uh, of acceptance just so that like, I could have the letters of acceptance because it's not fair that they would make such a huge deal about something that they shouldn't have. So I graduated community college. I was really stressed because all that hard work that I put into, I still wasn't going anywhere. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I had an associate's degree, so I really didn't know what to do because I, I, I didn't get into the schools that I wanted to. So I dedicated one semester just to focus on college applications, doing a lot of um, research, um, writing essays, um, doing a lot of the required work to have a really, really solid um, college application. Um, and that, that lasted one semester. I was working um, full time. I had a two jobs. I was working full time and a part time job in college applications. Um, and thankfully, that's, that's where I like, finally got into Amherst, where I wanted to go since the beginning. Um, and they're very supportive, they're really helpful. And I'm glad, like, it was very rewarding that all the hard work that I put into all, th all of those years of education. It finally paid off. Yeah. So we're gonna translate first and then we'll end the list of So um I think that you started this part by speaking about the executive order and Obama and Jack. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I was able um, to take more courses. Okay. Because of that. So, él empezó esta parte en hablar acerca de y no burlen en español, pero este um <laughs> acerca de um habla um la nueva ley, digamos, no una ley específica, pero se llama una orden ejecutiva. Mm -hmm. Um por Obama que fue él estaba tratando de pasar algo parecido al acto del sueño, el Dream Act, que al final de cuentas lo que eso significa muchos saben, pero muchos no. Y es, eh, permite a muchas personas a recibir una licencia para manejar, que sin esto no pueden, y también permite que los alumnos que van a la universidad, que son indocumentados, pueden recibir, pueden pagar el costo como si viviera aquí en, en Massachusetts que antes no fue así. Ten, tenían que pagar como si vinieran de otro lugar, que es mucho más dinero. Entonces, antes él estaba pagando como a seis mil dólares al semestre, algo así. Sí. Y ahora con esta nueva orden, digamos, que se llama DACA, eh, él podía pagar menos, como dos mil dólares al semestre, que es una diferencia muy grande. Y le permitió tomar más cursos, manejar a la escuela en vez de ir en bus. Y, a uh, apresurar más su educación, porque todavía tenía la meta de ir a Amherst o una universidad de cuatro años. Entonces, después, bueno, finalmente se graduó del Community College, lo que es la mitad del camino. La mitad del camino porque todavía su meta era transferirse a otro colegio. Um, entre todas las aplicaciones que hizo, o un detalle que no dijimos um, y que yo pienso que es importante. Um, a él el hecho de que la gente pensara de que estaba tratando una cosa tan difícil, casi imposible, a él no, no lo paró eso de su sueño. El hecho de que la gente se burlara en la cara de él y decirle, ¿tiene idea cuánto va a valer eso? Entonces... Eh, eso no, no paró para ella, de seguir en su lucha. Eh, yo 
Yo pienso que eso es algo que lo deben de tener en cuenta todos ustedes, los que están en la misma posición, los que están en la misma situación. Um, bueno, aparte del dinero, era tener muy buenos créditos, tener muy buenas notas para finalmente poder ser transferido. Encontró muchos obstáculos en eso. Um, el colegio que le ayudó fue Amers. Sí. Y, y finalmente ha tenido la oportunidad de, de tener unos precios más accesibles teniendo en cuenta que siempre ha estado trabajando y estudiando al mismo tiempo. Muy fuerte. Gracias. Um, You're at Amherst. Uh, How's it going? Oh yeah. <laughs> the first, the first semester was definitely more challenging than, than, uh, than now because um, it was very, very. It was a, it was a completely different academic setting. Um, the the classes were like twice or more the amount of work that I used to have at, at the community college. It's, it was very, very difficult. I struggled, um, especially the first week, just to get used to, because the Amherst culture is also very different. Um, there's a lot of very privileged um, people that go there. The majority of people are very, um, very um, prepared for that academic setting. Um, they've been like in prep schools, college preparatory schools for, for a long time. So the fact that I didn't have that background, that English is not my first language, um, that also affected me, but um, um, I was able to do fine, um, and I think now I'm I'm definitely getting more used to it. Um, yeah. And next semester. Next semester. Oh yeah, next semester. Um, <laughs> next semester, I'm studying abroad in, in Paris, um, and that has been really difficult to get because I had to I had to fight for it again with like the financial aid office. Immigration, because I had to, I, right now I only have DACA. So there is a whole another application in order for them to grant you a, a traveling document, mm -hmm. which it's been a long process, but I'm happy to say I'm going. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if you guys want to ask Brian questions, I think that would be great. Um, how should we do this? Maybe we should still translate that. Yeah. Um, do you mind? So why don't you go up there and then so Brian, will you just call on people? And you guys, when you ask your question, will you please say your name and where you're from before you ask your question? So Juan tienes tu pregunta. You already did it and I missed it. Okay, so we'll, we'll still like, do it again. Okay. Then he knows who he's talking to. Okay. Um, so di tu nombre y donde eres cuando dices tu pregunta. Uh, my name is Jan. Tengo con mi ladito. Um, <laughs> I'm from the yeah, Um, I just want to like, have you gone back to El Salvador? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. It's very difficult to, um, with my immigration status, um, it's, it has to be like an emergency, it has to be like a humanitarian, educational, um, or medical reason for you to travel. Uh, yeah. Do you miss it there? Like, what's, what do you miss the most? I definitely miss being there. I miss the culture. Um, I miss a lot, but. Yeah, it's been a struggle. Who are you translating? La pregunta fue que si ha vuelto a su país de origen. Él contestó que todavía no, porque es una de las dificultades que le presenta emigración en este momento. También le preguntó que qué extrañaba de su país. Él dice que extraña todo, su cultura, todo en general. Uh, my name is Melinder. Now that you're at college, is there anything related to your studies for your native country? Y me gusta español. Anything related to um, my studies from my country? Um, I study a lot of um, Latin American history and um, even uh, resistance movement in, in Latin America, like civil wars. Um, also a lot of immigration. Was it easy for you to learn like all the history of civil war and 
presidential stuff, all the laws passing, wars. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really, it was a great experience. It was easy? No, it was a great experience. It wasn't, I mean, it was, it was challenging, but it was still great to learn. Oh, yeah, I could have done it too much. Yeah. <laughs> Él preguntó que si estaba estudiando algo que fuese relativo a la historia de su país, en refiriéndose a, por ejemplo, la clase de historia, eh, cuando están hablando de las distintas reformas y las cosas que han sucedido a través de los años. Eh, obviamente a él se le ha hecho más fácil esa parte. O sea, no ha sido lo, lo, más, difícil, lo más difícil para él. <coughs> Brian, yeah. Oh. imagino lo difícil de todo que se cuando conociste a tu mamá, cuando tenía mucho tiempo sin verla. ¿Cómo fue ese momento cuando la viste? Fue, fue extraño porque yo no la conocía. Yo, ella se vino acá cuando yo tenía un año y medio. Así que solo, la, solo me acordaba de ella en, en fotos. Y fue, fue bonito, pero fue extraño porque. Eh, fue algo como alguien casi como desconocido, pero sabes que es tu mamá. Así que es una situación difícil de, de escribir. Cuando te estaba pasando todo ese proceso para llegar a donde estás ahora, tú, te pasó muchas cosas por la mente, como dejar de hacer esto y todo eso, pero ¿qué te motivó a seguir para adelante? Um, la ganas de seguir estudiando, de graduarme de, de una buena universidad. Um, también yo tenía muchos amigos de que estaban yendo a, a universidades de, de universidades de cuatro años así que ellos también me inspiraron para, para seguir luchando para, para seguir luchando para ver que yo podía también hacer eso Okay. <laughs> okay, so Brian asked um, what it was like to meet Brian's mom when he came here because they didn't really know each other. So Brian was a year and a half when he, when he came here. I'm sorry, Brian was a year and a half when his mom came here. So they really didn't know each other. And so when he came and got to know her, it was really weird because it was kind of like, you know, somebody that he sort of knew or was supposed to know, but then really didn't. So that took some getting used to. And then Brian asked <coughs> about, second question. Um, what motivated me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what motivated him? And he, he said, well, he has a lot of friends who had gone to four-year schools, and so he would talk to them, and that helped him a lot to stay connected to his goal and keep moving forward. Good, good. Thanks. Other questions? All right. Uh, uh, where do you see yourself traveling in the future? Traveling? Yeah, in the future. Um, I definitely want to go to Latin America. Because, yeah, because one of my goals is kind of travel in Europe when I'm going abroad. So I, wanna, I definitely want to go, like, travel throughout Latin America. Su pregunta relativa a dónde viajaría en el futuro. Um, my favorite subject is French and sociology. Well, those, those are two subjects, I guess. Um, uh, and I study, I, I really like studying when there's a lot of, when there is a lot of people for some weird reason, so I kind of like the noise to study and focus. I don't know, that's a really weird way of studying, but that works out the best for me. Yeah. Uh, materia favorita. Oh, sí, sí, la materia favorita. Eh, él habló de francés y de sociología. Y, y entre las técnicas de estudio que él tiene, él dice que puede estudiar cuando bueno, hay gente alrededor o cuando hay ruido. Bien, gracias.
Living in the U.S. or, yeah. or in North Oh, in the U.S. Yeah. Um, I really like the freedom that you have here, and also um, the the opportunities. I guess, like yeah. if you really want to work hard for something, you can definitely sure. do it here. Whereas in my country, it's very difficult. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is your experience being a student now versus GMCM? Oh, it's definitely, well, it's relatable. It's similar in a way because um, when I got to Amherst, I kind of felt like the first time I got to JFK because I was such a, like an outsider. Like even my academics were, I wasn't at the same level as other students. That's how I felt <coughs> at JFK because I didn't know English. Um, and in Amherst, it's because I didn't have the education, no background as the other students. So they're definitely relatable, but I think they're, it's going the right path. En su pregunta, ella me dice que, ¿cómo, en qué tiene que ver el hecho cuando fue de primera vez a JFK, que fue la primera escuela donde llegó aquí en este país, ahora que él llegó al colegio de Amherst? Él habla de. Hay cosas similares en cuanto a cómo él se sentía. Obviamente, sin mucha experiencia y como siempre, con la diferencia del lenguaje, de, de todo, de donde él llegaba, que era diferente. <risa> Other questions? Um, what were your goals to the USA? Um, my goal was to graduate, definitely graduate from high school. I really, that was my first goal. And college was definitely in the back of my head. <laughs> yeah. One and two. <laughs> um, I'm Aaron. I was born here in America, 10 minutes away from Chicago. Uh, what was the hardest part through your whole journey? Was it coming here? Was it uh, school or? Um, I would say my hardest part was like dealing with people. Um, all throughout, um, especially like, uh, like let's say, like when I was in high school, it was very like segregated. Like the ELL students were here and all the rest of the school was like here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, like in some classes, like they make fun of your accent. They make fun of the way you talk. They like make fun of your immigration status. They used to call me like illegal. I'm gonna call immigration on you. Stuff like that, like that was, that was joking around, but it still like kind of hurt it. Um, so that was, that was the most challenging part, even when I went to college, dealing with the people that didn't think I was gonna end up at a school like Amherst. That was very difficult. Obviamente es algo con lo que estás lidiando todos los días, es tu realidad y de pronto para otra persona puede ser causa de gracia. So, él considera que esa es una de las partes más difíciles, el tener que bregar con, con las personas. Cuando pensaste en para acá para contarte a tu mamá, tú sabías todo lo que tenías acá. Eh, tenía todo pensado, lo que, ah, todo el problema que te iba a pasar aquí, 
y como viene de otra nación que habla español y te sabe todo tu área, y aquí como tú eres un país desconocido que no sabe hablar inglés y todo eso, eso tuvo que ser muy difícil para tú lograr hacerlo como estás ahora. Sí, fue, fue muy, muy difícil. Um, yo no, ni sabía, no tenía idea que la vida aquí iba a ser tan difícil, porque en los países latinoamericanos siempre, siempre ponen um, los Estados Unidos como la tierra de las oportunidades, como todo va a ser maravilloso desde que cruzo la El frontera. País de maravilla. Exactamente. Y fue difícil adaptarme y, y saber de que no era así. Sí, porque venir de una cultura para aprender otra cultura es muy sí. difícil. Sí, exactamente. <laughs> so Brian asked um, when Brian this is <laughs> um, when Brian came here before he came what sort of how it must have been hard for him to adjust his expectations from before he came to what he actually thought about this country once he was here and sort of sort of that um, contrast and realized that actually you know in Latin America, People talk about the U.S. as being this like amazing country that where you have lots of opportunities and everything is easy and um, and it's just not that way. And so he's it's been hard for him to figure out. Well, you know that it's been tough. You have to work really hard for everything that you get, and it's not this marvelous place the way that it's painted in Latin America. Yes. Uh, Uh, what's your major in English? Um, right now, I'm a sociology major with film and media studies, double major, uh -huh. but I'm also taking a lot of French. Uh, like, how is that helping you, like, reaching your goal? Um, it's, it's definitely providing me with, like, um, the right skills for, like, what I want to do because um, I definitely want to go to grad school, yeah. so it's definitely, like, giving me, like, the background base knowledge to like proceeding to grad school. ¿Cuál era la pregunta? Oh, él me preguntó que si cuál era um, mi major, mi carrera. Uh, y le dije que mi carrera es sociología um, y medios de comunicación. Um, y después, oh, y también francés. Y después él me preguntó que si, cómo eso me iba a ayudar a, a alcanzar, alcanzar mis metas. Mi meta. uh, le dije que de verdad me estaban dando las um, skills, las oportunidades necesarias para avanzar y para ir a, a, a obtener un, una maestría o un, un doctorado. Eh, sí. ¿Ella te apoyó para venir para acá? Um, al principio no estaba muy contenta porque ¿Sabía? sabía los riesgos y todos los peligros que habían al cruzar la frontera indocumentadamente. Um, pero sabía que era decisión mía y de mi mamá. Así que me dijo que me dejó decidir. Pero ella visita mucho también. Oh, y yo imagino cómo tiene que estar tu abuela, que ella está muy orgullosa de ti. Sí, me imagino que sí. <laughs> Espero que sí. Yeah. <laughs> Did you said she visits Yeah. All right. Um, I wrote this one down. So Brian preguntó si cómo se siente su abuela. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, in English. <laughs> <laughs> That happens. Okay. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> when it does, but man, I have a lot of compassion for you guys. Um, so, so um, Brian asked, how's that, better? Um, how his grandmother felt and how his grandmother feels about him, um, especially coming here when he was younger and this was really his mother's idea. So how does she, the person who raised him, feel about him coming here? And he said at first she didn't really like the idea, she was scared because she knew it would be dangerous, but she kind of came around to the idea because she knew that it was what his mom wanted for him. Um, and then Brian asked if his grandmother was proud of him, and he said, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've had some people who have said a lot of questions, which I appreciate. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, <sorry. laughs>
<laughs> so I'll let your teachers know. Um, is there anybody else who wants to ask something? I know we all really no. thought a lot about <laughs> I want to hear um, some more voices, whether it's right now or when we are uh, sort of hanging out after. Make sure that you get a chance to talk for some more. Yeah. I'm going to start with, with Ruth. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Ruth. Um, que nunca se vayan por las como las clases más fáciles aunque sea yo sé que eso lo, es lo más es lo más bueno que hacer como oh, voy a agarrar esta clase va a ser fácil voy a sacar alguna nota punto no um, les aconsejaría que tomen riesgo de tomar clases de honores tomar clases de AP aunque piense que no estén preparados porque esas clases los van a preparar más y van a aprender un montón de esas clases. Um, y les va a ayudar mucho para aplicar a, a universidades y todo eso. Yo pienso que también con eso puede ser difícil, pero si tú te sientes orgulloso de ti mismo y tú, lo, y tú piensas que tú lo puedes hacer, también te puede lograr porque tú lo hagas bien. Sí, sí, también eso. I wanna add to that and add a additional question now. <laughs> so, para hacer bien y tener éxito en esas clases, necesitamos más consejos. Entonces, si uno va a hacer esas clases difíciles, ¿cómo sí. lo va a manejar? Um, lo primero que tienen que hacer, no escuchen a las personas que les van a decir o que les hagan burla, porque eso me pasó aquí a mí en las clases de AP. Era el único estudiante uh, lat latino que de, de ILO que estaba ahí. Y la gente se pone como, wow, un, un estudiante de ILO en una clase de AP. Como te ven como si sos como, oh, ¿qué está haciendo aquí? Como casi ni hablas inglés bien y todo eso. Um, lo que tienes que hacer, bloquear eso como luchar lo mejor que podés y no, no tomar la importancia a, la, a, a lo que lo digan las personas y también uh, es, va a ser más trabajo de tareas, más trabajo de esto, pero al final vas a aprender más y te va a ayudar más. Okay, in English, so Ruth had a great question which was what advice would you give us? And Brian said, don't uh, take the easiest classes. So make sure that you're taking challenging honors and AP classes so that you're really prepared for college. And I added to that and I said, well, if, that, if we're going to take those hard classes, how can we be successful in those hard classes? And he said, first of all, don't listen to what people say. So when he was in his honors and AP classes, people would make fun of him. He'd be like, you know, they'd say, oh, you're the only ELL in here. Like, what are you doing here? And he just had to sort of say, no, nope, I'm not going to listen to what they're saying. Um, because even if, even if you're taking really hard classes, you have more homework, you have more writing assignments, you have just a lot more to do, that more work equals more learning, which is what you need and which is what will actually help you succeed. So, thank you for that good question. Thank you. All right, somebody who hasn't said anything. Yeah, Alex. ¿Cuánto tiempo tienes de vivir aquí? Voy a cumplir 10 años en mayo. Oh, yeah. Cool. Sí. So, how much time has Brian been here? So, 10 years in there. Alright, well, so I have a question. So, what are your long-term goals? You want to go to grad school and then where do you see yourself in the future? Um, I have a lot of options for that. Well, I, I'm thinking of a lot of different ideas just in case, like, plan B and C and, like, B. Um, one of them is um, either, like, um, work for marketing the marketing uh, company, um, essentially moving uh, moving to a city. Um, also, another option is real estate. Um, work for real estate. Another option is um, get my PhD and, and become a professor. Um, and another option is work for communications. Yeah. Sí, um, una de mis opciones es uh, trabajar en un um, en el área de mercadeo como para advertising, um, a publicidad. Otras opciones es uh, sacar un doctorado y ser un profesor en una universidad. Um, otra opción es trabajar para bienes y raíces y la otra para um, 
para, el, para los medios de comunicación. Ya todo eso lo tiene planeado. Por si acaso no, no funciona. Si funciona una no funciona, está la otra. Tiene todo su plan. So actually, I, I'm really happy you guys all have questions. I think we need to stop and take a break because it's been about an hour, which yeah. you know.